Okay, so the plan today is to recreate this figure from The Economist magazine. As you can see, the lines and everything are very clear. Everything looks really tidy and it just communicates really well what they're trying to say. First thing we want to do is just insert a standard 2D line graph. Now what you're gonna learn is there are heaps of ways to make different figures and you can do it a lot quicker than how I'm gonna show you today. But the idea for this video is that you are sort of familiar with Excel and just wanna learn some of the basics or have a bit of a refresher. What we can do here now is we can right click and we're just gonna go ahead and add some data. So select data here and we're gonna add a series, the first series being the high income series. We'll just go ahead and select all of this. I'm just doing this manually uh, for this video, just so you can get a feel for how we're doing it. While we're here, we'll go ahead and select all the dates at the same time. Awesome, so that's now in the figure. So we'll go ahead and repeat that for all the other series. Okay, so you can see that we've got all of our data into the figure that we want now. So the next thing is to start working on the axes. Double click on this one, and this will bring up our format axis options. So the first thing I can see is that the maximum bound is 200, and we're currently at 180, so I'll just go ahead and adjust that to 200. You can also see that their units are every 50, so I'll change that to 50 and that looks pretty well uh, what they have there. The next thing I'm going to edit is the horizontal date axis. Now you can see that they've got uh, 2020, 20, 21 and 22. So the first thing I'm gonna do is try and get my years uh, a little bit more like how they have them. So to do that, I'm just gonna change the format code down here and I'm just gonna make it year, year. Uh, and it sort of, sort of works there, but I'm just gonna try and tidy it up a little bit more by setting this to the 1st of Jan 2021, because there's really not a lot of data there that's very useful for us. So that's just gonna adjust that. And then I'm gonna make this every 12 months. Now I'm missing the middle sort of one, but it's pretty good and I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm just gonna leave it like that, but I'm gonna add some tick marks just to help kind of understand what's going on there. I'll make both these outside. I'm also gonna make this black, um, which is just gonna help, I think. Okay, I'm actually gonna also make these tick marks quite a solid black color, because that's gonna help it sort of stand out uh, a bit better. And, and that's sort of working for me. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, it kind of shows from 2021 to 2022 to 12 months. I'm pretty happy with it. I think that looks great. So I'm also gonna make this text black just sort of to make it stand out a little bit. Uh, I'm pretty happy with these lines uh, across. They're sort of uh, a gray, which is similar to what The Economist has here. Um, so look, things are looking pretty good. Okay, so the next thing we can take a look at is some of these lines. Now, the first thing you'll obviously notice with the lines is that they are different colors with The Economist. Now. If you're working somewhere, you will probably have your own design palette or perhaps you have your own kind of design that you like to use whenever you're preparing a document or a report that works well for you. So what I've done is just used Microsoft Paint to get the color codes for the different lines here, just using the dropper function. So to change the color, we just select the line we want and go over here again in our formatting series. And we're just gonna change the color here. Now I've already added these colors just to make things quicker, but if you wanted to change it at home, all you need to do is select more colors uh, and go to this custom tab where you can enter anything you want for RGB as well as any hex code if you've got something in particular. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just select the colors that The Economist has used, uh, starting with the sort of dark blue, kind of turquoise, uh, followed by that goldy color and the last one is that nice sort of red. 
Okay, so that's looking pretty good. The next thing we want to do is add some labels to those lines so we know what each one is all about. So to do that, I'm just going to select one of these data points and right click and add data label. Now you see it's popped up here with literally the exact number that sits in that point. So that's very well, but I'm going to double click it and go in and actually change that. So again, we're into the format data label. I'm going to go to label options and we're just going to call this the series name. I'm going to get rid of the value and we're going to get rid of the show leader lines. Awesome. So we've got high income. That's great. We're going to make it a little bit bigger uh, and we're actually going to just make that text in bold. So we can just click bold or you can press control B on the keyboard. It's going to move you over here somewhere and we're gonna change the color to match that dark blue line. Awesome, let's repeat that for some more data points. Just right clicking, add data label, double clicking through and label options, series name, making this a bit bigger, making it bold and changing that color. Okay, yellow line. Maybe I'll show you why we just select one data point. If we have all the data points selected and we add data labels, it's going to literally add every data point on that line, which is very confusing and not very clear to see. So we just need to select the one and add that data label. Again, if you don't click through or double click this, it's going to end up with just a whole bunch of rubbish when you click that. So the best thing to do, make sure you're double clicked and then you can select your series name and we're making that one the goldy color and again in bold. Lovely, one more. Okay, now it's looking really good, really similar to what we have over here. What I've noticed is that this axis is actually flipped to the other side. Now to do that, you must select this horizontal axis which is a little bit counterintuitive, I guess. And then we want to go to this vertical access crosses and we're gonna select at maximum date. And that's just gonna flip that across the other side. Some of our labels have moved a little bit, but we'll just move those uh, around and make it all neat. And another thing you can do with these lines if you want it is you could actually change the point setting. So we can make them a little bit narrower. <laughs> Okay, so things are looking really, really good. If I bring this sort of across, we can see that most things are lining up really well. So the next thing we've got here is we've got a bit of a title. We're just gonna go ahead, we can add a chart title and we'll just go ahead and name this what's written over here. And you'll also notice there's a subheading, so we'll add that in at the same time. All right, so the first thing I notice is the top line is in bold, so we'll just make that bold and we'll justify everything to the left. I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit smaller, probably around 11 uh, and 14 or 12 is pretty good. So we'll just drag that up over here and we'll make sure it's black as well. Okay, so things are looking pretty good. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger again Okay, we're getting very close. The next thing is we want to remove the border around the whole figure because it's just not necessary. Just selecting no line uh, in the chart options here. So yeah, this is looking great. Okay, and the last thing is this little red bar and line, uh, which is traditional economist. You know, you might have your own style at work. We'll just throw it in uh, as if we work for the economist. And all we're going to do is we're just going to insert a shape and we'll make a little sort of box. We'll have no line and we'll make the fill that nice sort of economist red color. And we'll just pop that kind of aligned there. That looks pretty good. So what you've done is you've created a really nice looking figure uh, using the same data as the economist. But the idea is that the reader can just take from what you've produced, uh, what they need to know in the first few seconds. So what we're learning here is simply that high income and the upper middle income countries are obviously administering more vaccine per 100 people in their country.